What's going on, Packer friends? Welcome back to the Packaday Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Appreciate you joining me today. Let's kick things off with a big free agent signing. No, it's not Julio Jones. No, it's not even John Brown, but it is new tight end Sal Canella who was a former, well, is a current tight end, but formerly out of the University of Auburn, graduated in 2019, fresh off his epic campaign with the New Orleans Breakers of the USFL, where where he was named to the All-USFL team. He's going to wear number 80 with the Packers, bringing some real Justin Perillo vibes. Uh, 6'5", 242, only 25 years old, had a RAS score of 7.31, so a 73rd percentile athlete coming out of college. Um, had a couple of really nice athletic catches on highlight plays. I posted one of them or retweeted one of them uh, from our uh, friend of the show, Russ Brown. I uh, had a couple highlights out there, so I uh, retweeted one of those, but a couple of really nice, uh, impressive athletic uh, back of the end zone sort of touchdown grab. So interesting player, you know, coming off a really nice campaign with the USFL, with the New Orleans Breakers, and uh, certainly looking to make his way in the NFL. Uh, would probably be at best a rotational tight end, probably fighting for more of a practice squad spot, but you never quite know. Players like Cameron Wake in the past have made that transition from, I think it was USFL, uh, or maybe it was Canadian, I think it was Canadian Football League for Cameron Wake, but Needless to say, there have been uh, those transition stories in the past where a player gets their opportunity and they make the most of it. So hopefully that is the case with the newest Packer, Sal Canella. So he is uh, roster player number 90 on the team. We'll see if there's any uh, players that are moved to the pup list in the coming days that could op- open up some additional roster spots. Uh, but as of right now, uh, the roster is set at 90 players and uh, they don't have any more spots available. So if they want to add anyone else until they put players on the non-football injury list, pup list, etc., they would have to make a corresponding roster move. Let's jump into our main topic for today, and that is, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a really good series uh, from ESPN. Jeremy Fowler interviews basically coaches and executives and tries to get a feel for the best 10 players at every position in the NFL. Uh, So he goes position by position and does his top 10 players. I'm sure you've seen it on Twitter and social media. I believe you have to be an ESPN insider in order to access it. Uh, For ESPN's sake, I'm not going to spoil every player that was on that list, but I do want to go over the Packers rankings on those lists today and just kind of add in whether I believe those rankings were a little bit too high, uh, a little bit too low, maybe spot on, um, because I think there were some really interesting rankings for the Packers in this year's list. Um, Certainly there were some players like a Devondre Campbell, Razul Douglas, who were sort of these, you know, kind of like one-year players. There's other players that are ascending. We've had back-to-back MVPs with Aaron Rodgers. So um, a really interesting list on to where these players were, were sort of circulated amongst the executives and coaches. The other thing I'll note here, just even before we jump into it, is that you have to remember executives and coaches are spending the exact or like the, the vast majority of their time with their team, right? Like imagine Matt LaFleur and this could be position coaches and amongst others, like may, maybe like, you know, who knows, maybe Adam Stenovich was interviewed for this article. We don't know, right? But like, I would hope that Adam Stenovich isn't grinding a bunch of, you know, Los Angeles Chargers film to know like if, you know, their their corners are any good. Like they didn't play the Chargers a season ago. Uh, like I don't need, you know, our offensive line coach grinding. About, so they're going to have some periphery on players. I'm sure they scouted a lot of these players at some point, but even like uh, if it's a, you know, if it's an offensive line coach, the majority of scouting that they're doing is going to be on offensive linemen. So that like these players, coaches, uh, they're all, everyone's going to have a take, right? Of like how they rank these players, but you still have to take these with a grain of salt because like, it would be like, um, if I had a separate podcast tomorrow for like the, you know, Baltimore Ravens, right. Or something like, clearly I'm going to spend the majority of time on my Packers and I'm not going to do a good job of knowing what's going on with the Ravens. So you have to take some of these things with a grain of salt and same thing with me covering it today, right? Like I have visibility on a lot of these players, but it's not like I spent a ton of time, you know, grading Tristan Wirfs and seeing if he was actually uh, ranked better, should be ranked better than David Bakhtiari. So you do have to kind of review this with, with that level of, uh, you know, perspective, I guess is what it it should be. But I think it's still fun to go through these. These are always fun to discuss, but let's of course start with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. And I've said over and over, listen, if you want to put Patrick Mahomes as the best quarterback in football, I am not going to argue with you. If you want to put Brady there, if you want to put Josh Allen there, um, I don't think you can put Herbert or Burrow there quite yet. But if you want to put like those quarterbacks in the top quarterback category and put Rodgers down a peg or two, like I'm not going to argue with you. They're all phenomenal quarterbacks who bring something very different and unique to the table. But 
it would be very hard to not rank Aaron Rodgers number one when he was the back-to-back MVP of the entire football league and just with the ridiculous numbers that he's put up over the past two seasons. And that is, of course, where Aaron Rodgers ended up ranked on the list, the number one quarterback. Uh, Pro Football Focus had him ranked as the number five quarterback last season behind Joe Burrow, Tom Brady, Josh Allen, and Justin Herbert. Uh, But I think Aaron Rodgers more than deserving of that number one spot coming off of a uh, back-to-back MVP performances. And despite a very very poor performance against the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs. I think if you had to say like, you've got one game, who do you want at quarterback? I think executives and coaches are still probably leaning on Aaron Rodgers in that direction. So he ends up with number one on the list. Clearly I have no qualms with that. Um, And that's where I would have him ranked as well. If anyone, as I mentioned, wants to put you know, any of those other top tier quarterbacks, especially Mahomes, Josh Allen, Tom Brady uh, ahead. Like I get it, but you know, I think we've started to see a bit of decline from Brady. Finally, Uh, I think Josh Allen probably needs to win a Super Bowl, uh, at least before he's in that conversation. And if you want to put Mahomes there, I'm certainly not going to argue that against you. So that would be my ranking would be Rogers at number one. And that's where the uh, executives and coaches and this uh, ESPN list had him as well. Running back was another interesting one to look at. Uh, the list had Aaron uh, Aaron Jones at number nine, and they did not have A.J. Dillon listed at all. So just a quick aside to how these lists work. They basically had the top 10, and then you had honorable mentions, and honorable mentions could have been like a few players to a bunch of players, and then they had others receiving votes. So Aaron Jones was at number nine. A.J. Dillon did not show up anywhere on that list. And I think ultimately for Dylan that that's fair. I I think he just hasn't had an opportunity to really display himself. When he has been on the field and when he has gotten almost like starter type snaps, he's been impressive, right? But I just think until he gets the real opportunity to sort of be the guy or at least play a lot more than he has in the last couple seasons, it's going to be hard for him to crack some of these lists. And I think that's understandable. Now, Pro Football Focus had him graded as their third best running back. It is still in a limited amount of snaps and compared to a lot of the other running backs on the list. So I understand AJ Dillon not being on the list. I'm slightly surprised that maybe he didn't get like I don't know. Like, I would say like he's probably in like the top like 15 or 16, but I think it would be really hard to put AJ Dillon in like a top 10 list of current running backs, even though PFF had him as their third best running back last season, just based on usage rate. It's, it's, there's just 10 really good running backs in the league and it would be hard to put Dillon in that category yet. So I understand him not being ranked. I think Aaron Jones at number nine is a very fair ranking as well with AJ Dillon playing a bit more of a role. I think we saw a slight decline from Aaron Jones at times a season ago. I think his yardage and production was down in great part due to the offensive line or the Uh, lack of offensive line play at times uh, with Bakhtiari and Jenkins out, Corey Lindsley gone, etc. I think that was the bigger reason why we saw some of Jones's numbers fall off a little bit, but clearly still one of the better running backs in the league. And I think number nine is very fair for Aaron Jones. So I have no qualms with Jones at nine or AJ Dillon not ranked on this list. Wide receiver, I am not going to shock you by telling you either of these things that A, Devontae Adams was list number one on the list, and number two, no other Green Bay Packers receiver was listed as either top 10, honorable mention, or others receiving votes. It is going to take a massive effort from either Alan Lazard or Christian Watson or Randall Cobb or somebody. Uh, They're going to have to have like a 110 catch 1700 yards, 17 game season, probably to get ranked in the top 10 of receivers next year, just because everyone, even at that case, would probably, you know, view it as like, all right, was that an outlier? Because they haven't shown that in previous seasons. So uh, it's going to be tough for a, a Packer wide receiver to get there. But Adams was number one. He's now in, you know, Las Vegas Raider. So we still have to, uh, you know, talk about that. But he was number one and he was a Packer last year uh, to earn that ranking. So at least worth a mention there on today's podcast. Tight ends, none listed. And for those wondering of like, well, how did Robert Tunney not get a vote? Well, he didn't play almost all of last year. And even in his breakout season two years ago, PFF only had him graded as their 40th best tight end in 2020. So if Tunney wants to get in that conversation, he's going to have to stay healthy and he's going to have to have a really big season this upcoming year. So no issues with that ranking either. Offensive tackle. This was going to be the one I was really intrigued at is to see where executives and coaches rank David Bakhtiari on the list uh, because he didn't play all of last season outside of what, 20, 30 snaps against the Lions. 
They had him at number three, and I think this is a very more than fair ranking. With not having played all last year and still having some injury concerns, they ranked Trent Williams as number one, who has just played absolutely out of his mind the last couple seasons and should be number one on any list right now. Tristan Wirfs was number two. That might be a, like slightly aggressive, but man, I love Tristan Wirfs. I think he's a phenomenal football player, and I have no issue with him being number two on the list. And then Bakhtiari comes in at number three. More than fair. Didn't play all last year. Still questions as to what his injury status is. So I think putting him at three is maybe even uh, slightly you know, optimistic, but uh, overall love the grade for Bakhtiari. And if he was healthy and if he is hundred percent healthy, he should still be able to perform well within the, the number three ranking. And maybe even could get that number two ranking back from Tristan Wirfs. Interior offensive line, Elton Jenkins, also coming off an ACL injury. He ranked as number seven. So this was guards and centers combined. Pro Football Focus had him graded as the 14th best interior offensive lineman last year. So number seven uh, would be a little bit of a bump up from that. But the big thing here for Jenkins is just his versatility, right? So as I've talked about in the past, even if he's the 14th best interior offensive lineman, he's so much more valuable than that because you could put him in at all five positions at any given time, wherever the biggest need is, wherever the most difficult opponent is, you can change it up at any time and Elton Jenkins is going to be up to the task. So maybe he's the 14th best interior offensive lineman, but he's going to be much more valuable to that to coaches and executives due to his versatility. I think number seven is just about spot on for value with Elton Jenkins. So, so far offensively, Aaron Rodgers, one, perfect. Aaron Jones, nine, agreed. AJ Dillon, not rated. Maybe a little harsh, but mostly understand why. Devante was number one, no tight ends. Bakhtiari, number three, and uh, Elton Jenkins, number seven. I agree with all of that. And I certainly can't think of any other player that would be worthy of being listed in the top 10 of any of their positions. So I love the list so far. Then we get to the defensive side and it starts pretty good. Kenny Clark ranked number six of all interior defenders. He was Pro Football Focus's 13th graded defender, interior defender a season ago. So I have no issue with number six. I think that's right about spot on. If, if I were grading it um, and, and just you know ranking it, I should say, that's right about where I would have had him. I think Kenny Clark is a phenomenal football player. And more often than not, the, the Packers play as Kenny Clark plays. He's, he just sets up so much of his teammates and just the overall defense for success when he's playing well. But there is sort of like this, you know, limit to his upside, right? Really good run defender, but doesn't make a ton of plays in the backfield. Not a splash player, not going to force a bunch of fumbles or, you know, pick off passes clearly as a defensive tackle, but uh, it doesn't matter, right? The impact that he has is felt. And if anything, I'm very impressed by coaches and uh, the executives in this case, because so many times those players who are doing so much of the grunt work and so much of the non-sexy work, like they just are like ultimately like ranked like 15th, 20th or whatever. Like, yeah, they're a good player, but I need more splash. Like Kenny Clark is deserving of being ranked in the, the top six of players on the interior defensive line. He may not have all the sexy, flashy statistics, but he's doing the the hard lift, the hard work and the heavy lifting and is more than worthy of being at that spot. Love that ranking for Kenny. Clark and think that's more than fair. Then we get to edge rusher and we get to Rashawn Gary. Preston Smith was not ranked at all. I don't have a major issue with that. Rashawn Gary was listed as others receiving votes. So there were 10 players in the top 10, then five honorable mentions, and then three with others receiving votes. So at best, they had him as the 16th. At worst, they had him at 18th. Okay. He was Pro Football Focus's fifth graded defense, or, uh, edge rusher a season ago, tied for 16th at best in the executives list. There's no way, first of all, that Rashawn Gary is the 16th best edge rusher. I will start by saying that we are in a little bit of a golden age of edge rushers. So almost no matter what, like there would have been people complaining that uh, somebody didn't get in the top 10 here. All right, TJ Watt, uh, you've got Garrett from the Browns, Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, Max Crosby, Von Miller, Chandler Jones, Brian Burns, Khalil Mack, Cam Jordan, Trey Hendrickson, Chase Young, Daniil Hunter, Shaq Barrett, Demarcus Lawrence, Josh Allen, Robert Quinn, and Rashawn Gary. Those were the 18 players that received some votes. Those are all really good football players. The issue is Rashawn Gary's better than just others receiving votes. So 
listen, I, you can't put, in my opinion, Brian Burns ahead of Rashawn Gary, even though Burns has more stats, but Rashawn Gary, in my opinion, is better. Khalil Mack has had a fall off. I get that he's Khalil freaking Mack, but I would put Gary ahead of Mack. And then like, even in the honorable mentions, right? Like I get Chase Young, Trey Hendrickson had, you know, Trey Hendrickson had a really nice season and Chase Young has so much potential. Rashawn Gary is just better than both of them. So at, at minimum, Rashawn Gary should have been in the honorable mention category. There's no way that you can have him on the line with Josh Allen, Robert Quinn, and Rashawn Gary as other, or alongside, I should say, Robert Quinn and Josh Allen as other receiving votes. It just, that's not good enough. So I, I, recognizing the fact that this is a little bit of a golden age of edge rushers and there's a lot of really good ones, I understand that. And the, the other thing that I will give them and I understand is that Rashawn Gary's now played in the league for three seasons. He has a total of 16 and a half sacks. So a little, you know, averaging a little over five sacks per season, no 10 plus sack seasons and two forced fumbles, no interceptions. So while we as Packer fans, especially last year, saw his breakout season and saw him continue to improve and expect him to be a potential all pro player this season, he hasn't done that from a statistical standpoint yet. And unfortunately, that's probably going to, like, just as I said, like, I'm proud of the group with Kenny Clark for voting him so high. Rashawn, until he gets some of those splash plays, especially because the edge defender group is so deep, I don't agree with it. He should be in the top 10 at minimum honorable mention, but I can understand why if these play, if these guys aren't watching Rashawn Gary on a consistent basis, why they're just trying to compare these players, the longevity of a lot of these other players and their consistency from season to season could theoretically put them in people's mind ahead of Rashawn Gary. I don't see it that way. I think Gary is deserving of much better. I'm being slightly devil's advocate here, but this is probably the biggest issue that I have with anyone on the list is just Rashawn in the others receiving votes uh, category and not somewhere in the top 10. Next is another one that was slightly egregious, if not more. That's Devondre Campbell. Once again, we can talk about here that Campbell was a, at this point a one-year wonder, right? His other seasons were nothing to write home about. Phenomenal last year. And now will come the time where he gets a real opportunity to prove himself and say, hey, this was not just a one-year thing. I am that dang good. And I'm going to be here for a while. Uh, and I think he's going to do that. I don't have any question about that. But there was the top 10. And then Campbell was in the honorable mention category tied with eight other players. He was a first team all pro last year and pro football focuses second graded off ball linebacker. So just being in the honorable mention seems very much like a slight, uh, the, the big issue, as I mentioned, is just one year of real production or top end production. But my bigger issue here is that Jordan Brooks was in the top 10. Jordan Brooks was in the top 10. He was at best a one-year wonder and he graded as pro football focuses 39th best off ball linebacker a season ago. If you want to put, you know, a little bit of a damper on Campbell's season because it was just the one year, okay, but you cannot have Jordan Brooks ranked ahead of Devondre Campbell at this point. Now, Brooks could have a phenomenal season this year and then we can revisit, but just based on body of work so far, uh, give me, you know, give me Campbell and his season a season ago ahead of Jordan Brooks. No questions asked. I think that was a little bit, if not a lot of bit of a slight as well. Corner, they had Jair as number three. I think he's number two, clearly behind Ramsey, but without playing all last year, I'm not going to nitpick here. Uh, they had Marshawn Lattimore as their number two, uh, which I'm not going to complain too much about. I think Jair is just better than Lattimore, and I think you'd be hard pressed to argue Lattimore over Jair, but uh, because Jair missed all of last season, I don't have a major issue with it, and I will gladly accept Jair at number three. And then last but not least was the safety group. They had Adrian Amos as an honorable mention and Darnell Savage as in others receiving others receiving votes. To me, Amos may be slightly unfair, but probably fair. And Savage probably a bit generous. As I mentioned, I've had Savage as my, I think, second lowest graded defender on the team a season ago. Uh, so to have him in the uh, others receiving votes as the top safeties in the league seems a bit aggressive. Adrian Amos probably could have been a bit higher. There was the group of 10 and then Amos was tied with a group of eight in the honorable mention category. Savage was tied with a group of five in the others receiving votes category. But you look at this list of safeties that was ahead of Adrian Amos, uh, Justin Simmons, Mika Fitzpatrick, Kevin Byard, 
Derwin James, Buda Baker, Jesse Bates, Harrison Smith, Marcus Williams, Antoine Winfield Jr., Jamal Adams. I, I have like all of those are top 10 caliber safeties. And then even some in the honorable mention group, Jeremy Chin, Jordan Poyer, Honey Badger, Micah Hyde, like those are all really good safeties. So if, if Amos is in the honorable mention group, I don't have a major bone to pick with it. Uh, I just, I'm not sure how you put Darnell Savage quite up in that others receiving votes, but uh, if you're a Packer fan, you're more than happy to take it, I guess. So overall, my biggest two issues were Sean Gary and Devondre Campbell. Both should have been rated higher. Uh, Campbell, again, I think you can put in that like one year wonder sort of category. So he's going to have to go out and prove it, but just can't imagine how you put Jordan Brooks ahead of him. And and uh, Gary, I understand that the edge rush, rusher depth, but have some issues specifically with Brian Burns, I think being ahead of him. I just think Gary's the better player. So those are my two concerns. Otherwise, I think for the most part, they did a really good job of representing the Packers on this list. And I don't think things were too far off. Uh, Just two players that I thought should have been rated a bit higher, but no major complaints overall. I think they did a pretty good job. That's going to do it for me today. Thanks for joining me. We'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.